just a minute here. We will be starting the third game. It will actually be on the map Zodiac. Now, Zodiac is a pretty good map for Terran vs. Zerg, really. I think it's pretty exciting from both sides of the matchup. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a good map for Mew to harass because the natural, you know, it has that big area behind the minerals. You really got to put four or five turrets there as Terran to stop the Mutas. But other than that, it's very comfortable for Terran. There's a lot of room to, you know, macro it up with your Terran. You can put your add-ons, you can... You know, put a lot of barracks, a lot of supply depots, and that roomy main, you know, that's a very comfortable thing for the Terran player. And, you know, the the middle expansions are really easy to tank, so I could see Brat winning it, but also it's a macro-style map, pretty hard to 8 racks on a map like this, so, you know, it, it could it could go to uh, Hey Pro as well. What, what do you think, Vol? Yeah, I, I think there'll be a difference uh, between the two games, the last game and this game. Uh, the, the, the point being is that last game, I think it was very much de decided by Brass' decision to go uh, a quick mech marine push before command center, and, and that's actually unusual. It's it's a very much a, uh, a risky strat to try and try and uh, take down the, the Sunkins, and he didn't quite manage it, and he was behind for the rest of the game, so I don't think he'll be doing that when everything's in the line for the final game. I, I agree with you. I think that uh, you're right on that. And this game, with so much on the line, should be really good. Do you think yeah, that both the players nice. would uh, would go for a more uh, more sort of conservative tactic now that they've kind of got a feel of the other player? You know, uh, I think that Brat is going to want to do something early because that game. I mean, the thing he did early was like a kind of safe and kind of wanting a win at the same time. And Haypro really outplayed him in the game, so he may not be wanting to see that longer macro game. Was there something that uh, the Terran player should have done differently, perhaps being more defensive in the beginning to uh, solidify his macro better? You know, it, it could be. So, uh, you know, he he went for that dropship before vessel, which slowed down his attack timing, and I think that really. With no, doing no damage, it really put him behind. Alright, enough of the speculations, let's see what's really gonna happen. Can it? Hit it. It's showtime! Alright, here we go. Game 3, Hey Pro versus Brat. Round of 16, the Razor TSL. This is a super important match. This is the most important game, of course, as we'll decide who moves on to the top uh, 8. And who gets more money, more fame, the women, everything. I mean, this is really important. And we have Hey Pro starting out at 3 o'clock. We have Brat starting at 12. And, you know what? Already I see it's a little bit better for uh, Hey Pro here. The, uh, the main minerals at the 12 o'clock, they have a really open back, so uh, Meatless Caress is just going to be better in these spots for Haypro. So, uh, starting out with a little positional advantage lead. What do you think, Vol? Yeah, I actually hope that Brat does actually uh, try and go for a, a macro game, even though he, he lost his macro game to, to Haybro before. Haybro is going to know that Brat will want to do something offensive, and he'll be expecting something offensive from, from Brat, I'm, I'm sure of this. Uh, and if Brat goes for a macro game, uh, he, I mean, he's got skills. I mean, as you said, he practices a lot. He's a very talented player. If he doesn't make the mistake of just going for a failed sort of sunken break and not being able to do anything with his medic marine early game and really gets it going, I'm sure he'll be able to do better, do better and we'll probably see a very close game on our hands if that happens. All right, uh, Yanis, who do you think is going to take this match? Well, considering uh, both uh, sort of starting openers have been tested, like uh, we've seen Brad can rush and make it effective, and we've seen the, the Zerg player expecting it, uh, Haypro can deflect it, uh, I think uh, this is going to be a more of a middle ground kind of opener. I think they're both going to be kind of uh, conservative and start with more standard builds and kind of uh, something in between uh, is going to happen in between the last two games. 
All right, and uh, Vol, who's going to take this down? Man, uh, you know that I'm hoping for Brad to take it take it down. I honestly, if I was a betting man, I, I couldn't have put my money either way. I can only tell you who I want to win, but I mean, bias aside, I I think it's going to be very close. I I don't actually expect to see a a game where uh, it's, it's one sided. In fact, I hope it's not one sided. I actually expect to see a very close game. So sorry, I can't really answer your question there. I I, I really can't put the winner, honestly. All right, I'm gonna man up. I want the Terran to win. But hey Pro's gonna take it. That's that's my opinion. Hey Pro showed a ton of skill last game. If his macro gets going, it's gonna be hard to kill him. And I think he can outplay Brat in that type of game. And we see Brat, it looks like he is gonna go for a very fast command center. It looks like about 19 command off of one or two Marines. And uh, this is gonna set us up for more of a macro based game. We see that uh, Hey Pro just going for the 12 hat and then pool with a third hat before gas. So yeah, it looks like we are opening into, you know, uh, a macro game, and I think it favors Haper a little bit, but we'll have to see. It's maybe a little bit of a tear map. I'm really excited to uh, see how this match goes. I'm not clairvoyant or anything, but I think that uh, for sure the Terran player is going to lose to Muta Harass on the expansion fast. <laughs> Alright, you heard it here from Yanis. Uh, let's watch for that. We see uh, Haypro making eight slow zerglings. I've seen this strategy before by someone. Who was it? I, I think it was uh, LZ Gamer. Uh, it's a very good strategy on Zodiac. You can run those eight slow zerglings in, and because of the wide open natural, uh, it can be quite effective. But Brat saw those zerglings. He's making the bunker. Smart move, Brat. Do not lose to these eight zerglings. That would just be too bad a game. And the bunker is going to finish just in time. The Marines load in. These Zerglings aren't going to do anything. That's right. You see the bunker run away, you dirty Zerg. Making slow Zerglings. Who does that? God. Do you think they had a chance of slipping in, even if uh, like uh, two or three of them died? Or is it uh, totally stuck there? You know, I don't, I don't think he's going to want to waste those Zerglings. He's going to want to, you know, kill scouting SVs like he's doing right now and just save them for a little bit later, you know. Having some Speedlings around when you have your Mutas, it's a really nice move. You know, you can get in there, harass some turrets, that type of thing. So we'll probably see him uh, not try to run past. I don't think he wants to risk anything. He wants to, you know, solidify a good economy, a good army, and just not play risky because he did outplay Brat in the last game. So maybe he's hoping to do that again, but as we see, Brat going for three barracks already before any eBay. So it looks like we may be seeing a lot of Marines, maybe a quick sunken break right before Mutas or right after Mutas. And uh, Brat, though, I mean, he has a much better economy this game. He didn't open with Marine Medic into Expo, so he's gonna his supply is going to just shoot up in the mid-game much quicker than it did last game. So really, we're, uh, we're tuning up for a much better game this time. We see STEM researching already placed uh, perfectly for uh, the SCVs to uh, uh, reach fa uh, faster at the refinery, and perhaps he's going to try a little bit of uh, a little bit of the same uh, that we saw in the previous games to try and break the Zerg in the beginning if the Zerg's not prepared enough, and perhaps the Zerg player just tried to intimidate the Terran, showing him uh, like, "Hey, I got Zerglings, you can't come in here that fast," but perhaps uh, his um, uh, three racks uh, might be able to break that with stem. Yeah, I definitely hope that uh, Brat decides to move out because if you look at Haypro's base, he's just got the single sunken colony morphing down now. His spy is just starting. What Brat could potentially do is just quickly beef up with all of those marines uh, and just move to the right. Uh, so long as that overlord just hovering next to Brat's uh, natural natural expansion uh, doesn't see him. Oh, in fact, Haypro has, has cleverly got a uh, zergling just just hanging outside his base, ready to to see if Brat's pushing out, and at that point, if he sees that, that's when we put the sunken colonies down. So I've actually got to give um, Haypro an advantage just because his timing is creep on these just perfectly. It's really, uh, really good that he's doing it. So if, if Brat decides to be offensive, uh, Haypro will be able to defend it just in time and then move out with the Mutas. And, oh my god, uh, Brat is actually moving out now, so we're going to be able to, we're going to, we're going to see an, a very, very important play right now. Uh, this is actually going to determine quite a lot of the game right here. You're right, and this is a very good move right here. Look at this. He moves out one group of Marine Medic Fireback, kills the Ling. He keeps extra units behind. He's going to bring those up after he thinks the coast is clear. But look at this. Hey, Pro, running by. It's not going to do anything. There's tons of units left at home. Two bats, about five Marines. It's absolutely nothing it can do. Trying to just pick off some units there. 
But uh, you know, is is Brat gonna go for a sunken bust? I'm not too sure. It looks like he's uh he's not. He's leading some units at home. He's starting to turn it up. Uh, it looks like he did miss a depot, so that is painful. A little bit late on his factory as well. Uh, will that come into play? I'm not too sure because hey pro right now he hasn't taken a third base yet. So Brat doesn't have to be too too aggressive. And the mutas are hatching. Plenty of turrets being made in Brat's main. He has four turrets going up. But the natural... Oh, yeah, he is putting SCVs behind the minerals at his natural to make uh, turrets as well. So that's going to really help him out because that is a hard natural to defend. And the mutas look like they are bunching up, getting ready to go over and attack into this main. And meanwhile, a lot of zerglings dying. Oh, my. That is that is painful for poor Haypro there. And uh, will he go down and try to pick off that group with his Muta? Uh, you know, I think he probably should because a group of Marine Medic walk around the map makes it very hard for Zerg to take a third base. And Zerg without a third base just goes, runs out of steam in the mid game. But no, Haypro goes right into the main, starts attacking some depots, sees too many turrets and withdraws. Good move here by Haypro. We see an extra couple of turrets going down for safe measure while his army is outside, I guess. So he just wants to. Uh, make a statement for the Zerg player that it, it's not going to be easy to get in now that I see you got Mutas. Oh, and it looks like he is taking the island expansion. Hey, Pro is. Uh, wow, on the right side of the map, he's taking that island. So he has upgraded the uh, drops. That is a very interesting move. And look at this. He's getting his uh, Queen's Nest right now. Looks like we're going to see a three gas hive rush. A four gas hive rush. Look at this. He's taking both islands. I'm getting chills. This is a really original, cool strategy we're seeing here by Apro. I don't think I have ever seen a Zerg do this before. And I really, really like it. Uh, you know, Brat may not even realize that he has four gas, and as long as Haper holds those sunkens, those four gas are just going to slap Brat around. You know, Brat has got to tech up right now. He's got his factory. He's got to get some vessels going. You know, maybe a dropship, find out what's going on, because, uh, you know, a four gas Zerg is basically unstoppable. It's a little bit odd that he didn't attempt to even, um, you know, uh, make a check at the Sunkens. I know he scanned them and everything, but uh, don't you think if he bunched up all his army, he had a better chance before those two extra Sunkens were down? You know, uh, he definitely had a chance to test the Sunkens, see if he could maybe break them. It's hard to say. If uh, Hapro has good Mutal Micro comes in and slaughters your army, then uh, suddenly you lose instead of win. So Brat seems to be playing pretty safe. It looks like he's scouting around at the various land expansions looking around. But uh, still, I don't know if he knows yet about uh, taking those extra two gas. And we see the mutas in the top left of the map. We may be seeing something reminiscent of uh, Kumax vs. C, where you know you go for a very quick Guardians. And oh, look at this. He knows exactly what's going on. He's making a wraith out of the second star pour in the main. And there is a greater spire morphing with a defiler mount at the same time by Haypro. So Haypro is just going to have tons and tons of gas. And here comes the Muse. Oh my god, they make him cancel that uh, science facility. That hurts. A lot of gas lost on that cancel. And the Muse just running right through. Don't lose too many Muse here at Haypro. Uh, you know, if you do not have the Muse when that greater spire is done, that is, that is going to be a waste of a lot of gas. Yeah, amazing stuff. Um, what we're actually seeing is, is Hapro actually transferring some drones slowly with his Overlord. I just can't stress how amazing this Overlord uh, trick uh, is. I mean, Brat kind of been expecting this. I mean, he's 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 got the game sense to realize that something's up, and he's, he's figured out that he needs some wraiths. But it's just really clever on on um, Hapro's part, just um, saving up to use a strat like this, which isn't very common. Maybe he did see that game that Artosis mentioned. But uh, oh wow, it's, it's, it's going to be uh, tough to stop if if Haber, if sorry if Brad doesn't think of something to do in time. I don't think he's going to have enough wraiths ready to deal with this. I mean, he's going to have cloak, but uh, the thing is that. The important thing is that uh, Hapro doesn't need Guardians to win this game. He's got the he's got the Hydra stand. He's got uh, the Defiler mount, and he's just going to be able to uh, hang around. And uh, there's there's not too much that Brad can do. I mean, he can he can use dropships, but Hapro is already ready uh, with scourges to defend his expansion. He's going to have a spork on this and sunken down. And oh my God, there's the Guardians morphing there. So it's going to be real trouble for uh, Brad's expansion. And he's loading up a dropship. So let's see how this dropship goes. Just leaving his natural now. 
Yes, we can see the Guardians are ready and they're gonna start shooting at uh, the, the turrets at the expansion. Uh, there's a, a good number of turrets and the two rates are certainly gonna delay the situation a little bit, but uh, he's already got Spurges, so that looks like uh, the, the Guardian situation is gonna be uh, fairly effective. Uh, however, I I'd like to see the Terran player try to uh, constantly uh, uh, break the expansions in the main, like we're seeing now with the drop in the main base, trying to take down as many probes as possible and perhaps the Hive. Yeah, this drop is really good. Brat is playing extremely well. Those poke rates just destroy the guards. They do almost no damage. These marines come in, they kill a lot of stuff, and now drones attacking them under the Dark Storm. Sorry, your drones don't hit anything under Dark Storm. They are a ranged unit. And Brat with another drop ship. Looks like he may be taking out the main here. This could be really painful for Haypro. Haypro extremely low on supply right now. He's got under 50. And that is it. Haypro gives up. Brat advances. GG. Wow. Wow, that was amazing. Dude, if I was in Boston right now, I'd be high-fiving you because that's a Terran going through to the round of eight. So, excellent stuff. Wow. Simultaneous drop. That was just amazing. Yeah, and once again we see that uh, we would expect a kind of uh, the game to drag longer, but it, he got stopped right there. I think uh, the timing was crucial. I mean, he did the drop at the, at the perfect timing before he lets the Zerg go loose with macro and before it's uh, too difficult for him to break any lurker contains or anything. You know, uh, hey pro. You know, I thought that his build was just beautiful, and it was going to work out perfectly, but Brat just, he timed his drops well, he killed those Guardians very quickly with the Cloaked Race, and, I mean, there was really nothing Haybro could do from there. It was really good play, I think, by both players there. I think it's really um, quite an error that Haybro didn't have an Overlord with his Guardians during that attack because uh, Cloak would have finished and those those um, raids would have walked all over it. So all he needed was a, a couple of Guardians and uh, he might have been able to make that work a lot better. Indeed, indeed. And, uh, you know, that is that is a Terran going through. You know, I, I feel bad for Haybro. He's an excellent player. That was a very hard matchup for both. But uh, we do have a Terran entering the round of eight, the only Terran left in the tournament, so uh, congratulations to Brat.